السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us on this beautiful day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write our names as being from among those who will be granted entry into paradise without reckoning. Amen. My brothers and sisters, continuing from where we left off last night, it's important for us to realize that the Quran is filled with beautiful and powerful messages. And at the same time, these messages are echoed in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The statements of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have expanded on the messages of the Quran. There is no contradiction between the two. Every one of us, in order to save ourselves from the calamities of this world and the next, we need to adopt the method, the statements, and as best as possible, the lifestyle of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease. The Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, his story is mentioned in the Quran in great detail. And in that story, we find that so many things happened to him that would have been perceived by people like us as negative. Yet, he never looked at a single thing as negative. He always looked at it as positive. This was the decree of Allah. For as long as myself and Allah, the link is good, the link is powerful. I don't need to worry what happens to me on earth because what happens on earth here is always a test. If things happen that seem good, it's a test. If things happen that seem negative, it's also a test. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he was a beautiful, handsome person, subhanallah. Above that, he was chosen as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Above that, his father, his grandfather and so on were messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew this is a gift of Allah. So initially, they had decided to kill him. Then they decided, no, let's throw him into a dark pit. He was thrown into the pit. He was a happy man. Then some people picked him up. They decided to sell him. He was a happy man. Then some people decided to accuse him or attempted to commit immorality with him. He asked Allah to protect him and he was still a happy man. Then they said, if you don't do what we are asking you to do, we are going to jail you. He said, Oh Allah, I prefer jail than to commit fornication here, than to commit the act of immorality here. So he was jailed. That was the will of Allah. When he entered the jail, he was so thankful to Allah that he reminded the prisoners who were with him regarding the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if you and I were to be in a place where everyone is struggling and suffering and there was one person that happened to look at us and beam a positive message all the time, we would make sure we are in their company. In fact, we would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be in such beautiful company to remind us of goodness at a time where everyone is struggling and suffering. This was Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. He did not look at it as a point of suffering. He didn't look at it as a point of depression, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So, verse number 38 makes mention of how he tells the prisoners, But nay, many people are not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the favors that Allah has bestowed upon them. And one of the favors that he makes mention of is the fact that he is a worshiper of Allah. His father is a worshiper of Allah. His grandfather is a worshiper of Allah. His great grandfather is a worshiper of Allah. What a fortunate man. A messenger, son of a messenger, son of a messenger, son of a messenger who was declared the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim, son being Ishaq, son being Yaqub, son being Yusuf. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. Amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that at that juncture, the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam sees the opportunity to engage in da'wah. Sees the opportunity to engage in da'wah. What did he do? He knew that these people are asking me a question. These people have asked me to interpret their dream. They need something from me. Let me tell them that you know what? It's better to worship one God than to worship so many deities. So verse number 39 makes mention of this. 
يا صاحبي السجن أأرباب متفرقون خير أم الله الواحد القهار Oh my companions of this prison Oh my companions of this prison Are many deities better to worship Or the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who is irresistible That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So what I learned from this is my brothers and sisters don't only be concerned about saving yourself alone from the difficulties of the hereafter or from the difficulties of this world but in order to make it easier for you to save yourself you would have to be concerned about those who are with you you would have to be concerned about those you interact with those whom you mix with your family members verse number six of surah tahrim we've spoken about it that is the verse that has inspired us regarding this particular series of save yourself oh you who believe save yourselves and your family members from the fire not just yourselves but your family members as well and thereafter that circle becomes expanded you extend it to those you interact with your neighbors etc etc wallahi my brothers and sisters how many people how many from amongst us we have neighbors we have workmates we have colleagues we have those who work for us we have those whom we work for perhaps we've never introduced them to islam Never. We've never told them, you know what? This is my religion. Even if we're embarrassed, sometimes astaghfirullah, people are embarrassed to save others from the fire. Don't be. You need to at least give them a booklet or a CD or some form of information to say, you know what? This is my faith. I just want you to understand what I worship. That's it. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, look at him in a prison, in a prison. And he's busy telling the people, you know what? It's better to worship one Allah. You know what? If I look at that, I would realize that the heart of an individual in the prisons and when they are sick and ill or when they are in hardship is much more soft or is softer than it would be outside. It will receive this type of spiritual or religious news or information with greater acceptance than it would if it didn't have the problem. And this is why when Allah wants to draw you and I closer to him, all he has to do is introduce a problem into your life. Suddenly you become softened. No matter how big you are, when you realize your money is doing nothing to you, your position is doing zero for your health, the doctors cannot do anything. Suddenly you come to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Allah says, come when you are going through ease, and we will come to you when you are going through difficulty. I'm sure we've heard the hadith. Ta'arraf ilallahi fi rakhai ya'arifka fi shiddati. Get close to Allah. Become known to Allah during your days of ease. How many of us are famous on earth? But the angels don't know us. How many of us are famous on earth? But in the heavens, they don't know us. We've not done deeds that have gone up to the heavens. And how many of us are not known on earth? But in the heavens, we are so famous, we are celebrities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the latter rather than the former. Allahu Akbar. Imagine no one knows you. No one actually knows you even exist. You don't even have WhatsApp. You don't even have Twitter. No one even knows you don't even have a phone. Subhanallah. You don't even know what a phone number is. But the angels know you because you dial the correct number every day by fulfilling your salah. Brothers and sisters, that is how you save yourself. You will never be able, be able to save yourselves by having thousands or millions of followers online. They will not be able to avail you on the day of judgment from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we have beautiful days of this nature to go back and look into our bad ways and change them so that Allah has mercy on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon every single one of us. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, all that is required is a small change for the sake of Allah. And Allah will do the rest for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So I challenge you, my brothers and sisters, introduce the people who you interact with to Islam. Introduce them to some form of goodness. Introduce them to some program that perhaps they might listen to a little bit of the deen, at least on the day of judgment, when they want to catch you to say, you didn't invite me to Islam. I was with you for 40 years, 20 years. You never ever told me to consider the faith of Islam. At least you will be able to say, no, I did. I sent you the discs. I sent you the books. I told you about it three times. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, 
save yourselves. The people around us are going to hold us responsible. Why didn't you tell me that Allah existed? Why didn't you tell me that what I was doing was actually wrong? Why didn't you tell me? You better save yourself by having an answer. What will that answer be? Number one, you learn, you put into practice. And what's the next stage? Convey it to others. In Islam, goodness is achieved by conveying the message after learning it and putting it into practice. You cannot be miserly. This is why the hadith says, Man sanna sunnatan hasanatan falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawmil qiyamah. Whoever sets a good example will have the reward of that beautiful example. And anyone who follows that example up to the end, up to qiyamah, they will continue getting full rewards because you were the source. And this is why we say, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being the greatest of all creation, the most noble of all prophets, he gets a reward for every goodness that we do every salah every little droplet of zakah every hajj every psalm every good statement that we utter he's getting a full reward because he was chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to us to teach us the goodness what a fortunate man allahu akbar may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to follow that path as well then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the prophet yusuf alayhi salatu was salam remained in prison for a certain period of time even though he interpreted the dreams for those two and he told the one whom he knew was going to be perhaps saved and he was going to be serving the king that when you get to the king remind him that there is an innocent man in the prison unfortunately like all of us when we are reminded to do good and then suddenly the days are easy we forget the good we forget the good. My brothers and sisters, I can extend it to something even further. We forget salah when we are enjoying a ride, for example, on a roller coaster. For example, you go to the park on the day of Eid and you're having fun and you're there with a picnic, subhanallah, everyone is eating and suddenly you forgot to read salah to dhuhr. What happened? It's almost awesome. My brothers and sisters, during days of happiness, you need to be more concerned about pleasing Allah. The day of Eid is a day when a lot of us please the devil just because of the way we cut our clothing. We are exposed. I'm talking here not only of the women, but even the men sometimes. The meetings we have on the day of Eid are to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet it's a day of happiness. Can't we for once abstain from sin on the day of Eid, my brothers and sisters? Let it be a day of ibadah. Imagine when Allah gives you a day of happiness. Do you know what he says? I want you to be so happy that I want to add one more salah to your day. Today it's going to be six, not five. Allahu Akbar. The day of your marriage, for example, it's such a beautiful day. Allah says it's such a lovely day that I want you to add an extra khutbah today. There's going to be an extra act of worship. Come and listen to a few words. Sunnah, it's a sunnah, but the khutbah is supposed to be there. I'm sure you know. You don't just sit and say, right, let's get married. One, two, three. No, not at all. The sunnah method is to have it in the masjid. The sunnah method is to be able to have a khutbah, a little reminder, and then you have the acceptance or the proposal and acceptance, etc., etc. These are the days of happiness my brothers and sisters save yourselves from losing the reward that you would have achieved throughout the month of Ramadan by protecting yourself on the day of Eid remember it's a powerful statement a lot of us we worship Allah for a whole month beautiful our hearts are softened you know we grow our beards and suddenly the Gillette comes out when the night of Eid we come for Salatul Eid like when you know newborn my brother when you go for Umrah it's the here you shave not here Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. The point I'm raising is when you have achieved something through Ramadan, don't spoil it on the day of Eid. Don't just waste all those deeds. Day of Eid comes and you know what? Hey, I stayed away from adultery the whole month. I'm planning the day of Eid. We're going to book out. Where? We're going here and going. That's what people are doing. It's the day of Eid and you are transgressing in the biggest possible way. I challenge you, my brothers and sisters, cut it out. Let's continue with the goodness. That's why the hadith says, Man saama Ramadana thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal kana ka siyamid dah. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and continues into shawwal by adding another six days at least will then get a reward of having fasted the whole year. This is dedication. I told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to fast. But that doesn't mean I worship you only in Ramadan. I'm a worshiper who's going to worship you even outside of Ramadan. Allah says, if you really do that, I'm going to multiply that reward so much that you'll get a reward of having fasted the whole year. Brothers and sisters, I challenge you to fulfill just six days of Shawwal this year, inshallah. And I can tell you why I say this. We fast 30 whole days. What is six days? You and I know there's just a week left, isn't it? Or a little bit more than a week, subhanAllah. You must be saying, well, this man is calculating with the Zimbabwean calculator. 
my brothers and sisters, let me inform you of something interesting. Six days compared to the 30 days that we've been fasting is not really much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in our homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So the king happens to see a dream. And in that dream, it was so strange that he started asking his people, hey, I've seen this type of a dream. There's, there've been seven cows and another seven cows and seven ears of corn and another seven ears of corn, etc., etc. The people said, you know what? It's just a bad dream. But remember, sometimes dreams do have meanings. We shouldn't look too deep. We should not look too deep into dreams. Some people, every dream they have, they want it interpreted. Brother, sometimes you watch too many movies and therefore you are dreaming things that are really irrelevant. You know, be careful. Not all the dreams have meanings, but if it is something of concern at a time and you are a genuine person and it's really bothered you, you may want to seek interpretation. But please don't announce it on Facebook. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The sunnah is to keep it to yourself, to ask those who might be able to help you about it. And you don't have to announce it to the world. So the king saw a dream. He asked the people. The people were confused. A little while later, this man who happened to hear this dream says, Hey, there was a man who interpreted our dreams when we were in the prison. His name is Yusuf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a situation whereby not only would relief come to the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, but it would be an opportunity for him to clarify and clear his name regarding the accusation of the immorality that the women had placed on him. So what happened? The king says, call the man. When the messenger went to call the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he sends the messenger back saying, go and ask the king that what happened? Those women who were accusing me, find out about it. Let's see who was true, who was truthful and who was not. So the king decided to find out. He asks and the, the women were asked and they said, no, indeed, this man was really innocent. We were the guilty ones. Look at how my brothers and sisters, a jail sentence was not only served, but it was actually uh, meaning he actually spent time in jail and thereafter he came out and only after he came out was his innocence proven when allah wants to prove you innocent the whole world can accuse you of something but somehow somewhere allah will open the doors yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam himself he didn't go out and say, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. Did you hear that he went out all over to try and complain to the people I'm innocent? In fact, when he was in the jail, he forgot about who was innocent and who was guilty. He sees the opportunity to do other things. Look at it. We would be depressed if we knew we were innocent and we were jailed every day. I need to meet my lawyers. I need to do this. Come on, I'm innocent. Bang your head on the wall. And that will not help you. My brothers and sisters, look, seize the opportunity, become a refined person, get close to Allah. What a beautiful opportunity to read five salah a day. Lose a bit of weight, inshallah. And what a beautiful opportunity to become a person who is so close to Allah that when you come out, mashallah, the people will see the noon on your face. Another point I want to raise today, and I'm sure we have people in some of the correctional services listening to me right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you guys. Wallahi, when they come out of these places, do you know what happens? A lot of us don't even want to greet them. Now, this person was incarcerated for a year. I don't even want, don't even mix. Subhanallah, you have committed crimes that no one has penalized you about and they have committed crimes. Perhaps they have been penalized to the degree that they've regretted it. Let them come in. Give them a chance to integrate back into society. Give them a chance to come back in. Embrace them to a certain extent in order to give them a chance to prove themselves. Yes, if they prove that they haven't changed, you may want to distance yourself from a criminal. But at the same time, don't just have a label on a person who's come out of prison because there are many people either they have been innocently or they, have, they are spending time in the jails while they are innocent or they have come out of it and they have changed. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and correction. So then the dream was interpreted by Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam and the king decides, you know what? We need to make this man a minister. We need to make him in charge of the granaries. In fact, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam himself said, you know what? I'm quite an honest man. I am an honest man. Make me in charge of the granaries. Inshallah, I will do a good job. One of the reasons why he said that was if the king happened to confirm that he was indeed an innocent man, he would put him as the one in charge. If he was a guilty man, immoral, he was a person without any form of 
If, if he was a person who had no principle, the king would have never ever appointed him. Subhanallah. But he was appointed. That was a seal on the matter of innocence of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only clear your name, but he will elevate your status from the prison to the presidency. I'm sure you've heard that in, in South Africa as well. So many other countries. We have so many examples of people who were considered guilty for crimes sometimes that they didn't commit. And later on, years later, they emerged leaders. That was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For whatever reason, he decided to do what he wanted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. May he keep us innocent. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those whose status is elevated in the hereafter and in this world. I mean, so my brothers and sisters thereafter, the brothers of Yusuf happened to walk in. And when they walked in, subhanallah, what were they walking in for? The years had passed and the drought had struck. They needed food and they heard that, you know, on this land, there is a ruler or there is a ruler who has decided that people must get the rations. And there is a man in charge. He's a very good man, very straightforward man. He will give you rations without corruption. So each person who needed the ration, the males, the adults had to go themselves to collect it. You know, you cannot just say, oh, you know, my uncle's at home. He needs one share also. No, where is he? Bring him here. We want to see him unless there is a valid excuse. So Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam inquired. He knew these are his brothers. Those who planned his downfall, Allah dropped them lower than him. When we plan someone else's downfall, the chances are the very plan of ours will result in that person going higher than us. Remember that. If you have unjustly planned someone else's downfall, you are actually planning your own downfall. At the beginning, you might be smiling, but at the end, the one who smiles will have the best smile. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us elevation. Remember this. Don't be depressed. So as the brothers walk in, he recognized them. They didn't recognize him because he now had a beard. Subhanallah. Imagine when the person now becomes mature, you don't recognize them between the ages, perhaps of about nine to 13. Sometimes the boys change, you know, people change physically, sometimes 15, sometimes a little bit more or less. This was many, many years. So he asks them so many questions. How many family members? What, what, whatever other things he needed to know. He says, where's everyone? We don't see the one brother's not here. They said, well, he's too close to his father. His father won't release him. He says, if I don't see him the next time, you're not going to get a ration for him. In fact, you're not going to get a ration. And you know what? You need to bring him here. So anyway, they went back to the father saying, oh, our father, we want this brother to come with us. Now this time they were telling the truth. But remember the first time they told a lie. When you tell a lie once, my brothers and sisters, thereafter, people won't believe you. This is why save yourselves from not being believed when you are speaking the truth by not lying in the first place. Remember that when you like to lie every time you tell a lie just to make yourself feel good. The day you are serious, no one will believe you. You know the wolf story. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So now they were telling the truth, but the father says, hey, I'm really worried. Then they saw their wealth had been returned in the sacks that the grain was in. They told their father, hey, the merchandise here is returned. Let's go back. We take the brother. And the father agreed after telling them, giving them some advice and taking an oath from them. This time you're going to bring him back. They said, no, wallahi, we're going to bring him back. And they went. Now, a very interesting point is when they were going, the father said something. Listen to the verse. Verse number 67 of Surah Yusuf. وَقَالَ يَا بَنِيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِنْ بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ وَدْخُلُوا مِنْ أَبْوَابٍ مُتَفَرِّقَةٍ He says, O oh my sons, when you enter the palace, don't enter from one door. All of you must split and enter from different doors. Why? The Mufassireen, the scholars of Tafsir say, these were 11 very good looking men. And they were all big in size, beautiful, mashallah. If all of them are going to walk in from one door, perhaps the evil eye might affect them and attack them in a way that would result in disaster. So because of that, the father was too sharp. He knew, he said, you know what? Enter from different doors. So people don't notice and they don't realize that, you know what? All these are the sons of one man. You and I would brag. How many children do you have? Hey, I've got 12 sons, 12 daughters. Hey, mashallah, mashallah. I know what the next question is in your minds. How many wives? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. 
My brothers and sisters, very interestingly, so Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam noticed his brothers coming in. Obviously, he was the brother. He noticed them coming in and then he told his brother, Bin Yamin. He says, listen, I am your brother. Don't worry. We've hatched a plan. You play with it. Subhanallah. Meaning, don't worry what they're about to do. Subhanallah. So then he puts in the cup, the cup of the king. And later on, it resulted in that brother staying back. These brothers went back home without the brother. And they told their father, look, this man was a liar, etc, etc, etc. Cut a long story short, there came a day when after a long, long time, the father happens to tell them something because they said, Oh, our father, Oh, our father, as for Yusuf, forget about him. As for the other brother, we know where he is. The father says, Ya bani yadhabu fatahassasu min Yusuf wa akhih. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Verse number 87, he says, O oh my children, O oh my sons, go and search, go and look for Yusuf and his brother and never lose hope. Never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed, it is only the disbelievers who lose hope in Allah's mercy. Imagine years later, the father is still having hope and the children are saying, look, no chance, no chance at all. And we're saying never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, that is a statement for us to learn from sickness. You may have financial difficulty. You may have so many other issues you may have never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't use that statement when you are committing sin. I heard a person say, you know what? I just tattered my chances. You know what tattering my chances are? If you are in South Africa, you might know Tata my chance, Tata my millions. Have you heard that? The lottery. He says, I don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. I said, hey, you cannot sin and then say, I'm not losing hope in the mercy of Allah. I cannot start buying a lottery ticket and say, no, I have hope in the mercy of Allah. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. When you use statements, use them for the right reasons. Like I said before, do not use that as an excuse to sin. People say, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Yes, you are right. So he will forgive my sins. Yes, you are right. So now I'm going to commit many sins and I hope he's going to forgive me. No, the last part of your statement wrong. You cannot say that to Allah. You don't play the fool with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So thereafter, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam saw his brothers and he asked them a question. After they asked him a question, he says to them, Subhanallah. هَلْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِيُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ جَاهِلُونَ Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother when you were ignorant? They were shocked because no one knew about Yusuf. No one at all. They knew this has to be him because he's the only one who knew. They said, أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ يُوسُفْ Is it possible? Are you Yusuf? Are you Yusuf? He says, Ana Yusuf wa hadha akhi qad manna Allahu alayna. Allahu Akbar. I am Yusuf. This is my brother. But listen to what he says after that. Allah has favored us. Indeed, Allah has blessed us and favored us. He didn't complain. A lot of us, if something of that nature happened, we would say, yes, I'm Yusuf and watch what I'm going to do to you now. That's what we would have said. Look at him. He says, I am Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored us. Allah has favored us, which means you wanted to drop me down. Look at where Allah has raised me through your plan. Allahu Akbar. Had it not been for your plan, where would I have been? Subhanallah. So this is why when people plan your downfall and you start seeing a downhill trend, don't worry. A day will come when I promise you by the help of Allah, you will be high above them. If not in this world, then in the next. Allah will raise your status, elevate it. Because like I've always said, your bread is not buttered by them, but by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us good news. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to save ourselves from depression by looking at the positives out of a negative here. And immediately they said, Oh, our brother, forgive us. We were wrong. Forgive us. We were wrong. Subhanallah. You know what he said? Within split seconds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 92. No reproach upon you today. Nothing at all. I'm not interested in seeking any penalization. You are forgiven. 
Allah will forgive you. Subhanallah. Allah is most merciful. Allah is most forgiving. Allah is extremely beneficent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us. They went later on to the father and the father also subhanallah. You and I know immediately when he was told, Oh, our father, forgive us. The father says, Astaghfiru lakum rabbi. Verse number 98. I will seek Allah's forgiveness for you. For indeed, he is most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all lesson. May we be from among those who can forgive others as well. I want to end on this beautiful note. Brothers and sisters, to drop the mountain of stress that we have on our shoulders, you need to learn to forgive those who have wronged you. A lot of the times when you hold it, you are actually becoming sick yourself. You are losing your health. You are losing your spirituality. If you can release that, no matter how big it seems, by the will of Allah, you will have a lot of calmness in your health, in your wealth, in your deen, in your religion, in your dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. That having been said, I am not saying forgive criminals whom if you were to forgive them, they would perpetrate the crime against others. Those are an exception. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.